Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. As the next generation moves towards adulthood, their views are the ones shaping American politics as yes. they reach the voting age, okay? Here to tell us how to face the youth and understand the dynamic aspects of Gen Z is Sophia Dennis. She's the co-founder of Girls United. Yay. Welcome Yay. to Sister Circle. Thank you so happy to be here. Yeah. We're so happy to have you. Yeah. Oh, it's so exciting. Cool. Yes, yes it is Black History Month oh, every yeah. month on Sister Circle. Okay. But in honor of Black History Month in February, who are some of your heroes and why? Oh, mm, that's a hard question. <laughs> I definitely say Crispus Attucks, who's actually oh. the first person to die for the freedom that we have mm -hmm. in America. The first person killed during the Revolutionary War. So that's a very big influence on me and someone that we don't often hear about in right, the history right. books, yeah. especially for the fact that he's literally a pioneer for what this country is today. Another one that's really good is J. Cole. Mm -hmm. I just, just love yeah. J. Cole. I don't think we even need to talk about it. It's just, it's just amazing. Amazing. Love J. Cole. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cute. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you're here, though, because we do need this voice in a massive way. And the people say that you are the voice of the Gen Z. Okay, so you're, you're passionate about Gen Z, which is awesome. But talk to us about the upcoming election and how, sh how, what are your plans actually to get the Gen Z more involved in going out and literally, well, actually voting? Yeah, so a big part of this is understanding the importance of using your voice. So if you are Gen Z and maybe you're not even old enough to vote yet, it's really important to understand the social capital that we have through things like social media mm -hmm. and the ways in which we can express our opinions through using our voices. So for us, it's really important to use social platforms, engagements, events, and activations to really empower Gen Z. Mm -hmm. We don't really make as much of an income as other groups of people. While we, ha while we don't make an income, we are a large majority yes. of this population. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And so politicians don't often speak to us because we don't have the money to donate. Oh, or we don't wow. have the access to resources to donate. So there's not really many politicians who come to college campuses and talk to us. There's not really many politicians who speak to our community because we don't benefit them in the way that someone who's older than 35 would. Oh, that's my a message. That's, that's crazy. That's a message. And, and this time will be your first time voting. Yeah. What does that mean for you and what are some of the issues that you're most concerned about? Because your voice is the voice of so many mm -hmm. people. Yeah, so it's my first time voting, which I think is a major responsibility. And I hold that as something that I'm very proud of, specifically for me, because I come from an immigrant background. My parents were immigrants that came here from Liberia. And being able to be part of a democracy and part of a country where we have the ability to choose and to vote and we have those rights granted to us, it's really important for me to exercise that right. Mm -hmm. Also being said, the civil rights movement would have not been such a big deal if voting weren't such a big deal. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for us to understand that if voting such a big deal and people were literally fighting for the ability to vote, people were dying for the ability to vote, we need to ensure that we are carrying out that legacy mm -hmm. and uplifting ourselves to go out and vote and not just talking on social media. Wow. Yes. Okay, speaking She's of social media, media, you know, this Gen Z, y'all can't live without your phones, yeah. your iPads, your computer, just something, some device. I watch it. Yeah. Anything that's got a Everywhere, okay? <laughs> but, in, but real talk, how has social media really impacted the identity of the yeah. first time voters with Gen Z. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's something that's really important for us. For us, it's really important to understand political identity and the political geography of the nation. And so right now we're on a college tour to do so. Okay. Uh, so when we talk about social media, we're talking about our access to people who we've never been able to access before. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not trying to you know, throw any shade or anything like that, but when you guys were like 12, 13, or 14, how how long did it take to talk to someone from like Nebraska or Turkey? Oh, you didn't even be able to no, no. I could do that so fast on social media. Yes. And so I have a larger list of exposure to different political identities and political geographies. But along with that also comes the ability for us to be indoctrined into things that we don't necessarily believe mm. because of you know higher access to group think, all of these different things. And we're not we're not truly able to express ourselves because a lot of the times you get ridiculed on social media. Cancel culture is, it's you know, very it's, real. it's very real. Well, and guess what? We're not canceling you. You need another does. break because you're absolutely amazing. The bomb boy from ladies. Sophia and her co campaign when we return. Yes. I love Look it. At you. We are still here with the voice of Gen Z, Miss Sophia Dennis. Mm -hmm. I have to ask this question. You have a goal for registering 20,000 people yeah. to vote. Now, why is that number so significant to you? Yeah, so that number is so significant. While it is still a very small portion of this country and 
the, the population of this nation, it just feels right. You know, 20,000 for 2020, it seems like an attainable goal. Um, and the whole idea is how could we make voting something that's viral? Every day we're constantly talking about the negative things that happen in our communities and other communities. How can we make voting something that's viral? Yeah. And so we want to facilitate that process for people. And a really good thing to note is you don't, know you don't have to know who you want to vote for to register to vote. So we encourage people to just register to vote. Um, it's not really something that is too hard to do. They should use that hashtag, yes. make voting viral. Yes. 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 You might, let's do that. But uh, <laughs> while, you're thinking about a has, right, while you're thinking about a hashtag, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your organization, Face the Youth. Yeah, so Face the Youth was born in my senior year of high school. The Parkland school shooting had just happened, and I really wanted to understand why people supported gun rights and why people hated guns. Uh, as I said, coming from immigrant background, my parents didn't have guns, so it wasn't part of my culture growing up. And so we put on this d panel discussion, we filmed an interview, and from there we just kind of started doing more political things, and it's been insane ever since. Yes. yes. My and God. Doesn't it feel good to know it that you're does. changing lives? Oh. Do you yeah. still feel like you're changing lives? Yeah, because we do a lot of activations and we walk around a lot and we'll just talk to anybody like we'll talk to anybody people wearing trump hats people doing this people doing that and a lot of the times the feedback that we get is insane yeah like people saying that god spoke to them and told them that what we're doing is amazing we always get insane insane feedback. well Did god you? spoke oh. to me and said you're doing everything yes, yes. Uh, my god I well I, I don't know what she deborah said no. okay she said we're we gonna go. ask on social uh, media for more information about sophia and this amazing campaign please check out her website at www facethe youth.co yeah. mm -hmm. thank you so much thank you yes, yes.